of frustration. Silly mistakes again. Full of despair. I don't even know if I'll have a club tomorrow. From years of hurt, disappointment and relegation. It could be League Two next season. Bolton are down, Norwich are down. Two British football fans have had enough. Canary Bird Elliot Holman and Wanderer Henry Hewitt are in search of glory. Get in! Pride. It's been a joy to watch. Passion. Nanny! In search of silverware. MLS Cup champions, baby! And they found... ATL. Orlando! Major League Soccer. This is Elliot Holman on the MLS UK show. Uh, I'm delighted to say that despite being in my guest bedroom, uh, which is a little bit echoey, a little bit rubbish, not quite what we're used to. Uh, I am still joined by New York Red Bulls defender, Patrick Segris. Patrick, welcome to the MLS UK show. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm I'm very good. It's a little bit weird, isn't it? How are you doing? I'm great. Just making the most of being in quarantine and trying to stay fit and stay healthy in the meantime. It's um, when, when we were messaging the other day, you, you said that you were obviously this was a, was a while ago. Um, you were with your, your teammate, Tom Barlow. Um, he's been on the show before. I hope he didn't put you off the idea. <laughs> no, definitely. He enjoyed it last time he was on. So he had great things to say. <laughs> OK, that was good to hear. Um, you mentioned that you, you're just trying to stay fit and, and enjoy this this quarantine time. Um, here in the UK, we have entered lockdown. It's essential travel only for essential key workers. Um, I'm doing my radio show from home, which is ever so bizarre. What's it like over in the States? Yeah, in the States, uh, from where I'm from in Chicago, you're only allowed to leave the house for essentials such as groceries and gas. And it's turned to the same thing here where you can only go out for groceries, gas, food only if it's drive-ins, coffee, and I believe that everybody needs to be back in the household by 8 or 9 p.m. How does it affect you as as a soccer player? Because I know it's kind of been a gradual thing. There were steps taken and then further steps and, and steps again. How has it impacted you over the last couple of weeks and, and, uh, and your teammates as well? I think it's taken us out of our normal routine of being able to wake up and go to training and know what we're doing throughout each day and just getting that sort of off balance. We've had to adjust to it and make the most of it and take it as a positive. What's a typical day for you right now? Because um, I, I would normally ask this question and, and you would say, oh, I get up, I go to training and then maybe a few of the guys we hang out after. Like, what's a typical day in quarantine for Patrick Segrist? <laughs> well, for me, I'm trying to resemble it as closely to what it would be if we were still training. So in the morning, I would wake up, I'd eat breakfast, I'd uh text a few guys if they want to go and get the workout that we're given by the squad and be able to get the workout in bright and early, uh, come back, rest a bit, and then do some core upper body exercises at home. And then have dinner and relax and watch a movie and we'll try and come up with some hobbies, whether it's playing two-touch in the yard, having a bonfire, things like that you know uh, that Coach Armis isn't going to hear this, so all that first bit you don't need to worry about is fine. You can just say that you're sitting and watching Netflix in your pants. It's totally fine. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, when, we, w- when we talk about soccer, right, um, you grew up in, in Illinois. So Chica- because you're, you're of a certain age, Chicago Fire would have actually been around your, your whole life, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, the Chicago Fire was based out of Bridgeview, and I'm from Streamwood, Illinois. Mm. So I grew up playing with a small uh, club team that's quickly evolved called the Soccers FC Chicago, which was about 15 to 20 minutes from my house and about three to four minute drive from my high school. So having that and the way the club has shaped and formed me today has been uh, definitely a positive for me. And I'm happy I was there instead of uh, having to drive about an hour, hour and a half to trainings each day. Yeah, uh, this is the thing. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about because you because of your distance to um, to Bridgeview. um, How aware were you of of MLS in its early days? Uh, I wasn't quite 
that well aware. I know that a few of my coaches in the past have played, whether it was uh, Nino Da Silva, who was a coach for soccer, and then other coaches in that area had those certain connections with those players. So I didn't have a whole lot, but based in my young age and what the coaches provided me would just be a lot of European football and whether that was premiership or watching the Brazil national team. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not, su- not surprised to hear that. Uh, uh, one of the biggest questions that we get asked uh, or most common questions we get asked is why are you watching MLS when you've got like the premier league and the championship and, and all these leagues, which everyone in the States still watches, but MLS is, I don't know, it's more exciting. We absolutely adore it over here. There's a real core fan base of MLS fans over here. And I don't know, it's definitely growing, hasn't it? You must have seen a growth in your lifetime, certainly. Yeah, definitely. Over the years, just seeing how much that soccer has evolved in America, it's remarkable, honestly. I mean, you look at how many divisions are there. There are three or four divisions right now of professional soccer in america with the usl championship usl league one nasl and even indoor soccer so just to see that and how much of a fan base it's grown like you can see the amount of mls fans who fill up a stadium you're at the peak in MLS. I know it's only been a couple of games, but I want to talk to you about the the draft process and, and we'll get to those those first couple of weeks of the season. I've spoken to different players and they've said different things to me. When you're in the draft or you know that you're going to be in the, the MLS draft, do you know who's maybe more interested than, than others? Is there a few clubs you think, okay, they're definitely going to go for me? Some players have said absolutely and some players have said I had no idea. Yeah, for me, I had a sense of an idea just based off uh, for my first uh, combine. I actually went to the Red Bulls combine in December. And then uh, when I was there, I found out that I was invited to the MLS combine. So then I went to that and had interviews and interviewed well with Red Bulls and uh Then once the draft came, I had an idea that Red Bulls would be interested and I was happy enough to be drafted by them. It was different this year as well, wasn't it? We're we're used to seeing the the Super Draft in in one room, everyone there. Did you prefer the way it was done this year? Because everyone was just spread out across the country. I think it would have been cool to have the on-stage aspect of it. But for me personally, I didn't feel like I missed out on something. I was one of the nine people to actually have a camera crew in my house <laughs> to capture the moment live and to have that and uh, be with friends and family on video and to see it live was, it was a crazy, honest, honestly, one of the best feelings I've had in my life. I remember it really clearly. We were watching it. Um, it was broadcast over here in the UK, which again, we're taking steps. It's growing over here, which is which is excellent to see. Um, and, and I remember seeing it and, and those, uh, you know, the top top 10 um, players. I mean, it's huge to be in that top 10 for a start, isn't it? You, when it came to Red Bulls, having, you know, interviewed with them and spoken with the club, are you just praying that maybe no one else picks you up beforehand if you if you've got your heart set on Red Bulls? Uh, for me, I was just blessed with whatever ha- happened at the moment. I mean, I was happy to be in the position I was, to be invited to the combine, to be in the draft selection. So just to be there and be in that moment, I was just praying to God every day that everything would work out for the right reasons. And luckily it did. Yeah, and here you are. Um, let's talk Red Bulls. This is the exciting bit. You, you played a big part in preseason um, and then week one of the season, home opener against Cincinnati. You're straight in the starting 11. Talk me through that whole, that feeling. When did you find out that you were going to be a starter? And for a draftee, were you kind of a little bit surprised to be as included as you were early on? Um, I'd say that when I went into preseason, I was set on just learning from the veterans, learning from the coaches, and being able to 
apply myself in the best way possible to fit the system. And the way I played in college, I fit the Red Bull system, being aggressive, counter-pressing, getting up and down the field. So I had no doubt in my ability at all. And to be able to learn from those older players and learn from the coaches, I think has helped me focus on little details that can improve my game. And uh, once I found out the day before training that uh, I was in the starting 11, I right after training, I texted my mom and said, no, I'm going to be starting in the starting 11. And then she was just very happy, very excited because she was actually in Jersey and came to the game. And she's one of those big supporters I've had in my life in college. She's always supported me at every single home and away game. She would fly to away games. And to be in a stadium and be at Red Bull Arena was a surreal feeling for me. Like, when you're in high school and college and even uh, grade school growing up, you're in that stadium thinking, wow, I wish I could be there one day playing in front of all these fans. And then once you're in there, it kind of just hits you. You look back and think that you were once that little kid in the stands and then being on the field and especially being able to get a win. And it was an amazing feeling. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine what my mum would be like. She's like one of those super embarrassing mums that that's like way, 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 way supportive. So uh, I can only imagine what she would be like in that situation. But it must exactly. be it must be so amazing to to make to make her so proud as well. Definitely, yeah. She's played a huge part in my life, and I'm always happy to share that moment with her. Um, while we're while we're chatting about Red Bulls, they have a history of giving youth a chance, giving draft picks a chance, and it normally works out pretty well. You must think like you're in the you're in the perfect place, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, based off what Taylor Twelman said uh, uh, after I got drafted, he was definitely right. I'm in the best place I could possibly be in, and the best thing about Red Bulls is me coming in as a rookie they made me feel like family right away and wanted the absolute best out of me from each training. And just to have that togetherness and that family aspect in a team where everybody's on the same page is hugely important to me. Yeah. Red Bulls is a club I look at when I'm, um, looking at uh, analysis, I will immediately uh, imagine that draft picks and uh, youth players are going to be given way more of a chance um, than, than most other clubs in, in MLS. And, and I feel like they, they pick well as well. You're not going <laughs> to big yourself up, I'm sure. But they, they always pick well. They know exactly what they need. They know um, who suits their style. And I feel like you, you the, from what I've seen of you, it, it's just the perfect fit. Exactly, yeah. I mean... I didn't want to go anywhere else. I love the coaching staff. I've heard great things about them leading up to the draft. And when I went to the combine, the seventh and the eighth, that's the only place I could picture myself being. So for it to all happen, it's ideal. You played in in the next game the next week as well uh, as a starter, which is incredible. And now it's just stopped what what's it like what are you hoping will happen how soon can we get this season underway again yeah for me i'm just hoping everybody's i mean this is a serious issue and it's a major health concern so i'm just hoping that everybody's staying safe and staying healthy at home and of course it's unfortunate for all of us to not be able especially me coming in a rookie season, but I would just got to take it as a positive and make the most of my time while I'm home and be able to stay fit, keep staying healthy, staying on the ball whenever I can, and just taking every negative point and turning it into a positive. Do you have any, have you been given any kind of inclination as to, to when MLS is likely to get going again? I know, you know, they're taking this very seriously, which which they should, but do you even have like a rough idea in your mind? Uh, not really at the moment. We're kind of just taking it week by week and we'll see where things go and what the MLS decides. This is the MLS UK show. The MLS UK show with Lucid FC. 
a distinctively modern, casual fashion label. Take a look at lucidfc.us or lucidfc.co.uk and see why celebrities love the look. This season's current line is called What's Your Effing Club? Which is your F? Football, fashion or film? If it's football, you're in the right place. Film, the MLS UK show podcast is now available to watch on YouTube. But fashion... It's always lucidfc.us or lucidfc.co.uk. MLS UK Show with Elliot Holman and Henry Hewitt. So there we have it. Patrick Segrist joining us on the MLS UK Show. Uh, fingers crossed we get underway again very, very soon. But remember, stay inside, stay safe. Uh, we will try, try in this very, very small room uh, to bring you uh, as much content as we possibly can. Um, we've got another chat coming next week with Atlanta United's Lawrence White. So stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure to subscribe on uh, YouTube and on all of the uh, your favorite podcast providers uh, and follow us on socials at MLS UK Show. Stay inside, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, hopefully we'll all get back to normal very, very soon. Lots of love.